I was 17 on December 7th, 1941, and I turned 18 on February 15th, 1942, and I enlisted in the Army Air Corps to become an aviation cadet to fly fighter planes against the Japanese, whom I hated for what they did on December 7th. I was 19 when I graduated from flying school with 10 hours in a P-40 in August of 1943. I went to Hawaii and I joined the 78th Fighter Squadron to get 50 hours in a fighter plane and go forward, but they kept me. I guess I could fly and they kept the best because it was a training squadron. And on March 7th, 1945, I landed a P-51 with my squadron on Iwo Jima three weeks after the invasion to strafe for the Marines as they took the rest of that island. The sights, the sounds, the smells, I still see as I, as I stand here today. Iwo Jima was 650 miles from Japan. The B-29s needed escort. There were 90,000 soldiers fighting on eight square miles of land. And there were 28,000 bodies, remnants of bodies. 21,000 Japanese killed on Iwo Jima and 7,000 American Marines. We were all quarterbacks. All fighter pilots were individuals who learned how to fly as a team. And I flew with 16 guys who didn't come back, five in training and 11 in combat. I could tell you the names, the dates, and how they died, but we don't have a lot of time to do that now. It's written in the book, The Resilient Warrior. One day I was a fighter pilot, and on August 14th, when the war ended, I was over Japan, I came back, I landed, and the war was over, and pretty much my life was over. I came home, I was discharged, one day I was a, a warrior, and the next day I was a civilian, and I had no satisfaction in my life in anything that I did. I did become addicted to a, a game. I didn't do drugs, I didn't do alcohol, I didn't do gambling or any of the things that are addictive, but I played golf as an addiction. <laughs> I became pretty good. I was a scratch golfer for 30 years, but I never played to enjoy. I played to escape. I needed that escape. I found no satisfaction whatsoever in business or any other activity. I married, met a lady by the name of Helene on Good Friday, 1949, on a blind date. We celebrated our 61st anniversary this past October. And uh, we had four sons, loving family, but I found no satisfaction in life until 1975. Helene said she wanted to learn how to meditate. And of course, if she did it, I had to do it. And for the first time in my life, at the age of 51, I felt grounded, I felt satisfied with my life. I felt that I was accomplishing something in the business world, and I did. And it was a happy time, and it's been a happy time. Early this year, I received a phone call from a young lady by the name of Lynn Clock, and she asked me a question. She said, Jerry, do you know anything about military uniforms? And I said, yes, why? She said, Dory committed suicide yesterday, and we want to dress his uniform. We want to put the medals on so he can be buried. Dory was a veteran of Bosnia, and this was 2010. He had been home for 12 or 14 years, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. He had no one to talk to, no one to go to, and he took his life and he left two children, a wife, brothers and sisters, and a mother and father. She has learned how to meditate. Lynn Clark has learned how to meditate since then. But I knew what soldiers suffered from and that his death affected me deeply. And I also knew what the David Lynch Foundation was about. And one phone call, in one phone call, I asked, could we have a veterans division of the David Lynch Foundation? And instantaneously, the answer came back, yes. And this is the launch today of that foundation. We have the ability to teach young people who are suffering tremendously. I knew my enemy, I knew what I was fighting for, but the, these young people are in a foreign land 
They can't pass a garbage can. They can't see a car coming by. They can't see a person coming by without thinking something bad is going to happen to them. And they're suffering very deep post-traumatic stress disorder, and meditation can help them. So I appreciate your coming here. I appreciate the fact that David Lynch is launching Operation Warrior Wellness. We have an opportunity to help the 800,000 young veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan and beyond, and thank you very, very much.